small holes. bulletin and, and read responsibly with me. The blessing of Father, Spirit, Son, Holy Trinity, three in one, be in our meeting and our greeting. In the words that we share and the words of our prayer. The blessing of Father, Spirit, Son, Holy Trinity, three in one, be in our living and our breathing. Our hymn of praise is 
Number 62, Creator God, Creating Still. that you will guide them in the ways of freedom and justice and truth and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those who serve in the armed forces that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish to harm us, that you may turn their hearts to all kinds of kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered and known by God, and for those who love them in death as in life, offering this distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish, those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift up our eyes above the torment of this broken world. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forevermore. Amen. Scripture reading today is uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through um, chapter 3, verse 24. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground of the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. 
and whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of, uh, of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die for God knows that when you eat it, eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wish wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were, man they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. I lost my place. <laughs> And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. 
In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants in the, of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until, until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for the wife, and clothed them. Then the Lord said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also freely from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent, forth, sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life.
this story as the fall of humanity. The world around him was changing, he was changing, and like so many of us, Augustine looked to scripture for guidance. His version of the story goes like this. God created paradise for humans to live in, but Eve messes it all up for everyone by eating a piece of fruit that God told her not to eat, and this causes the fall from grace. And so now all of humanity is cursed. According to Augustine, every person born after Eve inherited her original sin. And so it's essential that men should be dominant and controlling so that they don't screw over humanity again when women do something that they already shouldn't have done. Stephen Greenbelt in his book says that Augustine's theology and interpretation of Bible stories were rooted in his own shame. The story goes that Augustine got, shall we say, a little too excited as a teenage boy, if you know what I mean, and while he was at a Roman bath. Embarrassing, no doubt, I'm sure. But he came so consumed with this idea of shame, of not being able to control his own body, that he spent a decade writing theological treaty about it. And in that treaty, he set out to prove that the main condition of paradise before the fall was that Adam could control himself by his own will, and that Eve went and messed it all up. And that's why we have to be careful what we read into scripture when we're looking for guidance. On a Rob Bell podcast, Rabbi Nahum interprets sin as bad learning. So maybe the real sin here is that we have bad learning when it comes to this story in the Bible. I think the real tragedy, though, is not this idea of original sin, but original shame. Shame that we still teach as a fourth century understanding in this 21st century of the Bible without knowing the history behind it. Shame that created a version of theology in the first part. Shame on the part of Eve, for she was deceived into the myth of insufficiency. The great lie of the creation story was that the first people were told they did not have something and that made them not good enough. The knowledge that God had and that they thought by not having that same knowledge they were separated from God. Where in fact they do have a belovedness and unity with the creator. Where they were called good from the beginning. Called as co-laborers in the garden. But the lies that they had been fed resulted in shame and then deep psychological estrangement. We know how the rest of the story goes, don't we? God comes walking through the garden and cannot find Adam and Eve. And so God calls out for them. And so man responds with, we heard you, but I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Again, another piece of the story where humanity is ashamed ashamed for being naked, for not following the rules, and probably even ashamed for hiding. And therefore the relationship is put in under stress due to the estrangement that has already taken place in their mind. But you see, God's first question isn't about eating from the fruit of the tree. Rather, God's first question is, who told you that you were naked? Who told you to be ashamed of your body and to hide it? You see, it's the kind of thing that happens with a parent and a middle school kid when she looks in the mirror and asks her mom, do you think I'm fat? God can't help but be defensive, my beloved. Who told you such a thing? Why would you ever think such a thing? And only after those questions do we get the question about eating from the tree of fruit that I told you not to. You see, the original problem was not about going against what God had told them, but rather about not being proud of who you were, not thinking that you were enough for God, not seeing the belovedness within themselves and therefore being ashamed and wanting to change that which they were ashamed of. You see, the story really is about original shame, not original sin. You see, the story isn't about believing, repenting, and accepting. Rather, the story is about forgetting who you are, forgetting that you're made in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. It's forgetting who you are and whose you are and being given the opportunity, returning back to the person that you've always been. 
it good. God breathed life into humans, each made in God's image, and called them good as well. God so loved us, in fact, that when we failed to stay in communion with God, the Son was sent into the world so that all of us might find life abundant. We give thanks today for the gift of life and for God's sustaining presence in it. We have the opportunity to offer ourselves up to God afresh and to open our lives to the movement of God's Spirit among us so that we may be recreated to be what God has seen in all of us all along. Truly good.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we can never be worthy enough to do that which we are about to do. We admit that we do not deserve to be invited to dinner at your house. Yet here at this table you receive us and Christ offers his body and blood for us. We do not have to pass a test. We do not have to earn our way. And we do not have to pay for the privilege for you in your grace have made us worthy. Bless us now as we bless these elements. Refresh us, restore us, and heal us as we partake. Guide us and challenge us as we try to live and witness in your name. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we invite you to partake of whatever communion elements that you brought with you. We know that God took a holy meal and made it that from regular everyday elements. This morning, as you partake, remember that the bread of heaven is the freedom from shame. Let us share in the feast. Thank you. 